Hello my fellow paint monsters, how are you doing today? I'm Aga and this is Hungry for Paint, a channel about handmade watercolour paints. Today we'll be mixing colours using paints from Greenleaf and Blueberry. If you missed my review from last week, make sure to watch it. These are some really nice watercolours. First I want to make a mixing chart. I like to show you the colours that the primary triad or the colours closest to the primary triad make. I want to show you some greens and some greys that you can create using these and I'd also like to do an ink test using, as always, a Sakura Pigma Micron pen. So here we go. The Mayan red is a slightly toned down red and it's very warm. It's warmer than a magenta uh, and Mayan blue is a bit subdued as well uh, and it's pretty far from cyan. So the primary mixes here are not going to be extremely bright but the colours are pretty intense nevertheless and especially the greens are quite amazing in my opinion. Now, like I mentioned in my review video, the Mayan colours, especially the Mayan red and the Mayan yellow, are slightly more sticky than other colours. They don't move in the water as freely as other colours and it is visible in the mixes that they create. The mixes are not as smooth and you can see variation in the colour when you mix uh, colours using Mayan yellow and Mayan red. So there are going to be darker places and lighter places, more yellow ones or more red ones depending on which colours you use. I'm not saying it's bad, it's not. It just it creates texture and it depends entirely on your preference uh, whether you're going to like that effect or not. Personally, I'm a big fan of the green that Mayan yellow and Mayan green can create together. And the texture that comes out is quite lovely, personally, for me. Personally, I love all the mixes that Mayan Green creates and also Pipestone is a colour I like a lot for mixing. I especially like the greyish colours that it makes together with Malachite. They are both granulating colours with visible particles, so the resulting mixes are going to be interesting in terms of texture. I'm using that property in my demonstration picture that you can see at the end of this video. 
I think these two can create very interesting backgrounds together. And in general, malachite creates pretty interesting mixes as well, due to its granulation and texture. In the ink test, as always, uh, first I draw a line using the Sakura pen, then I paint on top of it, so you can see what it's going to look like if you first do your line work and then paint on top of it. With these paints, in most cases you're going to be alright. Uh, pipestone and malachite are a bit more opaque than other colours, so with these you might consider whether you want to do your line work first or at the end, but it's not a huge deal, I think. I wanted to mix Mayan Blue together with Magnetite, as Magnetite has a very strong texture. And the mix indeed is quite interesting, for me at least. So this is definitely one of the things you can use Magnetite for successfully, for mixes, to lend its texture to other colours. And I wanted to show you the difference uh, between the mixes with Mayan Yellow and the Yellow Ochre. The first ones are going to be a lot brighter and more vivid and the second ones are going to be uh, more toned down and earthy. So I hope this is going to help you decide which colour you prefer for mixing. Mayan Blue together with Brown Ochre creates more greenish tones than greyish ones and Mayan Blue and Castle Earth make dark greys. And these two neutralize each other best out of all the colors that I have. And in the second part of the inking test, I'm drawing a second line on top of the dried paint, so you can see whether the line is going to feather, whether it's going to get blurry or not. As you can see, uh, with the watercolors from Greenleaf and Blueberry, you can safely draw on top of them. In the demonstration picture here, I mainly used Pipestone, and for the background I used a mix of Malachite and Pipestone. For the creature I used Purple Ochre. I enjoyed the texture in the background a lot. Keep in mind that the paper I'm using here uh, is Canson Mixed Media Paper, so it's not a good quality watercolor paper. I reckon it's what a lot of people use uh, just for everyday painting and playing around with watercolors. The mixes and the swatches in my review, on the other hand, are all made on Arches Cold Press watercolor paper, so you can see the difference how these paints behave uh, both on cheaper cellulose paper and on very good quality thicker cotton paper. Okay, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button, leave a small comment down below. If you've got some experience with paints from Greenleaf and Blueberry, leave your opinion in the comments. Make sure to visit Hungry for Paint on Instagram next week on Wednesday for a sneak peek of who our next maker is going to be. And if you want to support this channel and help it grow, you can also make a small donation on coffee. You're going to find all the links in the description of this video. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week. Bye bye!